Hey guys, welcome back to our channel and I hope you're having an awesome day. Today, we have a very unique company to discuss that has been anointed the United States' best chance to become an eVTOL or air taxi contender. Joby Aviation was founded in 2009 and has found themselves in the position of becoming the best way for the United States to counter another drone takeover from China. Last time, it was DJI with small drones, which the United States government didn't prioritize. This time, the US has said it won't make the same mistake with the rise of Ehang and other UAM startups. So stay tuned for the four reasons why Joby may be a fantastic long-term aviation company. Welcome back everyone. If you enjoy our content and you find it helpful, well, then make sure to like the video down below, subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell so you can be notified every time we post a new video. And don't forget to comment down below with your thoughts on Joby Aviation and how the company might evolve over the next few years. For those who are new here, my name is Mark and I am an exponential transformative technology enthusiast. Along with my co-host Kevin, we explore the technology and business revolutions that are happening all around us and look for opportunities to invest in them. Today we're looking at Joby Aviation. Joby Aviation is a California-based venture-backed aerospace company, and they're developing an eVTOL, which is electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, which is intended to operate as an air taxi service. The company was founded in 2009 by Joe Ben Bevert, a serial entrepreneur, and has raised more than 800000 to date. They're based in Santa Cruz, California, and have 500 employees. <clears throat> so Joby's uh, main product is the S4. That's the one you saw before. It has six rotors and seats five people, including the pilot. Unlike Ehang, it is not autonomous at the moment, and I think that's okay. I know there's a push as a selling point, that's the main way it should operate, and that probably is true in the long term. I don't think many of these companies are going to be able to work without a pilot on board until there's a strong proof of concept after a couple of years of transportation and being in operation. It can take off vertically like a helicopter and then shift into forward flight using tilt rotors. It's capable of traveling up to 150 miles an hour on a single charge at a top speed of 200 miles per hour. So this enables it to go really from city to city in a region. So it could be a regional transportation vehicle that will replace some congestion and auto transportation, replace a lot of very costly helicopters and regional airplanes, and as well, it could potentially replace commuter trains that are packed right now and have a much more convenient way of traveling. The flight on this is near silent. It is a hundred times quieter during takeoff and landing than a helicopter. The aircraft will be electrically powered and operate with zero emissions. So being quiet and also not polluting the air are two big positives and a reason why the transfer away from helicopters might happen much sooner than you think. It's intended to get people to their destination five times faster than driving. And also they plan to really ramp up with a 55,000 square foot production facility in Marina, California, followed by a 500 thousand square foot factory and this is possible due to uh, significant funding that they've received recently through their final production prototype that was revealed earlier this year their target as we mentioned earlier is to launch in 2023 the big change they had recently was with uber <clears throat> to date they're planning to be a full locked system in a sense like a tesla or an apple or an ehang where they own all components of their platform. They will own the, obviously, <laughs> the flying taxi. They will own the vertiport and develop that where people can take off and land. And they will also now own the software and tools that enable people to book flights on their a vehicle. So that is a key component. They were going to rely on Uber <clears throat> with the Uber Elevate software that was tested out in the New York area. 
Uber through some of their trouble recently and Core Focus sold that to Joby. <clears throat> so they acquired their tools and personnel and they also had a cash infusion of 75 million from Uber as well. So the financing for the company is important to see. Self-financed by uh, Joe Ben Bevert, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong, after the sale of his company's uh, Velocity 11 and Gorilla Pad. This got them through the first several years so they could develop their prototypes. In 2018, they raised $100 million through a number of companies that backed it. Intel, Toyota Ventures, JetBlue, and also Capricorn Investment Group, which was a big backer of Tesla and SpaceX back in the day. Then they had their big round in 2020, in January 2020. No one really saw their prototypes until that point. Even journalists who reported on them could not really show uh, what they were working on. So people didn't really know if what they had was operational or could actually fly in the air. After this, they secured 590 million in funding in the serial Series C round. This was led by Toyota Motors. They are the majority owner for all this funding right now. This infusion of cash through Toyota's financing is the first reason they may have a long runway going forward. Toyota has a vested interest in making this work. It's a national priority in Japan as well. And they're not going to let this fail. So <clears throat> that alone is a good sign that they, if their proof of concept went well, which it did, now that they're scaling up, Toyota could be a big customer of theirs. As we mentioned, they acquired Uber Elevate, which brought their full funding to 820 million. So their second reason for having a long-term future is that they are in the works to join in on the SPAC IPO craze that's happening now. They have reached out to a bank that's uh, seeking a company to acquire them through a SPAC. And a SPAC is a publicly traded company created usually by a, a venture fund for the sole purpose of buying a company and merging them so they become public in a backdoor way. They don't go through the normal public rounds and vetting of the company and showcasing. They just do it immediately by being acquired by a venture capital fund. The SPAC evaluation at the bank put forward is $5 billion. PitchBook last year valued the company at $2.6 billion. billion. So I think it'll probably be somewhere in the middle, although with the SPAC raised right now, that might actually happen towards the 5 billion point. Right now they have 463 employees, which is a pretty big company for a company that hasn't even begun production. Their third and probably most important reason they have a long-term runway is that they have a partnership with the Air Force, which is a big linchpin for them. So the Air Force has announced just uh, in December that they're fully vested into Joby. The Air Force has issued a first of its kind safety endorsement of an electric powered vehicle, similar to a helicopter, opening the door to using such commercially developed equipment for military missions. The Air Force will help accelerate safety analysis by conducting flight tests, pledging to pay for contracts, seeking to verify vehicle reliability, and generally vetting the capabilities of vehicles through direct and indirect funding of the company. This tells me that the Air Force is really looking to transition away from helicopters, which are dangerous, noisy, and in a way an archaic technology. Just like the helicopter was tested during the Korean War in the military before it really went into commercial use, the same will likely happen here. The Air Force has a vested interest in making this work. They want to replace their aircraft. I think they'll, they're giving Joby a full testing ground for free, probably paying them as well to do this. And also they have other reasons that the US does not want to lose out on another drone type market. Will Roper, the head of Air Force Acquisitions said, we're really competing with other nations to bring this technology to bear, not just for military missions, but for all missions, including commercial ones. Ferrying freight among domestic locations connected by military airspace could begin as soon as early next year. This is the key thing. Joby anticipates formal FAA safety certification by 2023, which is when they also plan to have commercial operations for the first time. They have several years of testing with the Air Force that'll really help push them ahead of, of most of their US competition. 
The Pentagon plans to spend roughly $100 million annually to support flight tests and pay for actual transportation. That's a huge amount of money that will help them. And the big thing is that Colonel Nathan Diller says the long-term goal is to ensure that the U.S. manufacturers snare a major share of the emerging air taxi market, pointing to China's dominance to commercial drones, he said. We can't afford to do what we did with the small drone industry. In a sense, they do not want to lose out like they did to DJI. They let China dominate the small drone market, which is crucial to commercial and military operations in the U.S., and they're not going to let that same thing happen with larger aircrafts to Ehang in China. And finally, they said they'll bring in several other companies, such as Vermont-based Beta Technologies and Texas-based Lyft Aircraft, which we'll look at, but they are not at the same level as Joby in terms of uh, competitive capabilities. The fourth area I wanted to go over really briefly is, aside from Toyota's investment, all the capital they had from uh, public markets, the Air Force, the fourth area is metro area-based transportation. Lilium has a contract with Orlando and several places in Florida to build a transportation hub. Other regions are going to want the same. Joby does not have that in place. There's rumors it might happen in Houston, but sooner or later in the next several months, they will, they will likely announce a similar deal to Lilium in another U.S. city. Once you have a metropolitan area investing, that is also a long-term commitment with major financial investment. I don't see them as a risky company. I see them as an uncertain company. So for myself, I always like to invest in uncertain companies, knowing that the downside is limited. Upside, we don't know, but it could be the sky's the limit. Risk, I don't see the risk here for what you don't want for them going under. I think that they're well capitalized and they have a number of components that will help them out for the long term. Thank you for listening, and uh, please comment below on other companies you might want to hear about or your thoughts on Joby. Thanks, and have a great day.